Worst to Best is a series where I rank all weapons within a class after I've unlocked mastery camos and have a considerable amount of experience with each weapon. This video is all about the launchers, which is exciting because I never got around to doing this for Modern Warfare 2. Later in this video, Into the AM has an exclusive offer on amazing graphic keys that you will not want to miss out on, so keep an eye out for that. This worst to best will be a bit different. I've wanted to try an alternate format out. We'll start with sharing and comparing important stats like how long it takes to destroy certain kill streaks, and I'll highlight clear winners and losers in each category. Then I'll rapid fire these six launchers from worst to best like I usually do, except it'll be much quicker. And if you're interested in just that or certain stats, I'll have everything timestamped with chapters for easy navigation. Please don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. These are the stats I'll be comparing, starting with a quick overview of these launchers archetypes. The Storm Ender is unique as it is an EMP blast that you can free fire and it specializes in score streak and vehicle destruction. The RGL-80 is a grenade launcher that's more geared towards ground combat and it is the other launcher that you can hit fire. The Pila is a free firing launcher that can also lock on to targets. The Joker is a lock-on only launcher that deals massive amounts of damage, and the RPG-7 and Strela-P are both free-firing rocket launchers, the former being more geared for infantry combat. Movement speed is not the most exciting for a launcher. All you really need to know from this chart is that the Storm Ender and the RGL-80 are noticeably faster overall. Handling speeds are a big factor for launchers. All of the traditional launchers will force you to aim down sights before you can fire a rocket. The main takeaways here are the Storm Ender and RGL are agile launchers, whereas the Pila and the Joker are sluggish. Sprint to fire time in general doesn't matter if you're destroying equipment or kill streaks, but it does come to play when you are shooting rockets at other players. And it's a similar takeaway here. The RPG is the one traditional launcher that isn't too sluggish. The Joker, as you'll see throughout this video, just has so many things it has to do before you can fire at a rocket. It's ridiculously sluggish. And the Storm Ender doesn't look quite attractive for sprint to fire speed, but realistically you won't be in situations where sprint out times really matter for that weapon. The last handling stat before we dive into damage, which I know is where all the excitement is, but reload speeds. Take a look at this chart. Our boy, the RPG, is the king of reload speed. Notice that it is the only launcher that doesn't gain much from reload canceling, where reload canceling on other launchers will shave off a second or two, and that still doesn't get you to reload as fast as the RPG. That brings us to damage. I broke this up into two sections, killstreak and vehicle damage, and player damage. Primarily, you use launchers for destroying stuff, so we're going to start with the kill streaks. What you're looking at is how much damage one single shot from each of these launchers deals to the Wilson kill streak. This also translates to aerial streak damage up next and quite literally everything to follow, so make sure you take this all in. The Storm Ender and RGL are relatively weak in terms of damage dealt, but more damage doesn't equate to being a better launcher. Fire rate will consist of shot delays, your force ADS, lock on time, and your default reload speeds, which is why I wanted to familiarize you all with this stuff at the top. And because of this, the Storm Ender and RGL will deal a lot of damage over time because it can pump out shots way faster than your traditional launchers. Your, your other traditional launchers, uh, well, let, let me just show you. The next test I performed is how quickly you can destroy a UAV, which introduces a, another variable you have to consider, which is projectile speed. With the Storm Ender, you just look up and you tap the UAV twice and then it explodes. It takes the Storm Ender a total of 2.5 seconds to do this. 
The Pila takes four seconds from the start of aiming down sights to that UAV being destroyed on the map Rust. This also happens to be the same time it takes the LMG from the default anti-air class that everyone has access to to shoot and also destroy that UAV. <laughs> the Joker, on the other hand, is ridiculous, and we'll, we'll come back to that later. Uh, I also want to mention the RPG and Strela are capable of shooting down aerial streaks. Uh, the UAV specifically are tricky to pull off because these weapons don't lock on. Rocket pathing isn't straight. Uh, for a UAV, the, these two weapons just aren't going to be effective as the Storm Ender, so I didn't even bother testing these. Moving on to test number two, we have the same concept but with a VTOL. I tested all the launchers except the RGL here because that isn't practical to shoot in the air, and we see a similar trend. The Storm Ender takes a lot of shots, but it destroys noticeably faster. The Pila is about the same as the default LMG, which personally I find fascinating. And the Joker here isn't as ridiculous, uh, which tells me the higher the health a killstreak has, the more effective the Joker will be. And then the RPG and Strela just aren't effective at killstreak destruction. They don't deal enough damage and they take too many shots. And realistically, the numbers I'm sharing with you on screen will be much higher. Last but not least, let's talk using launchers as weapons against enemy infantry. The Pila has a pretty small lethal radius, and lethal radius is the range you can get a one-shot kill. However, it has the second largest blast radius. Compare that to the Strela P, this has a smaller lethal range and a much smaller blast radius, which means you're even less likely to get hit markers on players with this launcher. Compare that to the Joker, which has a massive 13 meter lethal radius. And the blast radius is so large, it doesn't even fit on the screen. 23 meters is all the way over in this alley on Favela. And if you land a rocket between that red circle and this point, you won't get a kill, but you will deal damage to a player. That's what I mean by blast radius. The RPG has the second largest lethal radius and a reasonable blast radius. And last but not least, the RGL. Uh, I was actually surprised to learn you can't get a one-shot kill to a player with full health unless you're landing the grenade right at their feet or direct impacting them with it. Uh, so that yellow range is going to be your two-shot kill. It's going to be way more likely with this weapon. And then the blue radius is your three-shot kill. And yes, you can get hit markers outside of... Uh, those radiuses, but I feel like that's kind of the sweet spot where you're going to be using this weapon and landing your shots. This overview of the blast rate, I should give you a nice little comparison to reference. The RPG actually has some pretty decent uh, explosive range. It's a great contender as a run and gun launcher. The swap speeds even reinforce that. All the launchers have similar swap speeds, but the RPG is a standout as a speedster, even though 666 milliseconds isn't crazy fast. But I mean, depending on your class setup, you can amplify that speed with vests and perks and make the RPG feel very snappy. This is the last graph before my worst to best rankings. I didn't really see a good place to put this in earlier, but I thought this would be good info to have. And that is the projectile velocity. With that said, let's launch into what everyone's been waiting for, the worst two best rankings. But first, Into the AM has launched several new graphic tees and you need to get yourself some. If you're unfamiliar with Into the AM, they genuinely make some of the most comfy, like well-fitting shirts and they're constantly keeping their inventory up fresh, always dropping new designs like this stellar statue design. This one has the space theme going on with it as well, which they do with a lot of their designs. But I guarantee you'll find something you like. Right now through July 8th, you can save up to 30% off as part of their 4th of July sale. And if you use my discount code, D that will save you an additional 10% off your entire order. You got to keep your wardrobe fresh. And again, they got all different sorts of designs and colors like this uh, vintage cactus Vista tee. They also got basic tees if you're more of a low profile type of guy. They got shorts. You can stock up on hoodies for the winter. They also just released a new line of tanks with some of the more popular designs like this tree of life design. And I genuinely, I just highly recommend uh, checking into the AM out. Uh, you can check the link down below that take you directly to the website remember if you do use my discount code 
for an additional 10% off your entire order. Make sure you get those orders in before July 8th so you can take advantage of that 4th of July sale. Back to the video. This will be quick as I've already shared a lot of the stats and some of my thoughts, but at number six, the worst launcher in Modern Warfare 3 right now, shouldn't be a surprise, it's easily the Strela P. In my eyes, launchers are valued differently in this game than they were a few years ago. Ground-based player combat is the priority over killstreak destruction because killstreak destruction in general was incredibly easy to do in Modern Warfare 3 and even the last few Call of Duty games. Uh, the thing is with the Strela P is that it sucks at both of these things. It sucks at killing people, it has pathetic player damage, and it sucks at destroying kill streaks because it has pathetic vehicle damage. I mean, it has the same amount of vehicle damage as the RPG, which I don't necessarily understand because back in Modern Warfare 2019, the Strela P's niche was that it dealt increased damage to, uh, you know, vehicles and kill streaks and all that stuff, so especially ground-based vehicles like tanks. I mean, maybe that's still a thing in Ground War, but that's not really relevant in Modern Warfare 3. So, uh, yeah, the Strela P is quite literally a useless weapon. At number 5, I have the Pila. The reason being is that it's just pretty underwhelming as a uh, launcher. The player damage is pretty low, and the handling speeds are very sluggish. And when you run into players with flak jacket, or whatever the explosive damage reducing perk is called in this game, it's like near impossible to get a kill with any of these slower handling launchers. The one and only thing the Pila has going for is that it can lock on to kill streaks and other vehicles, but again, it's not really that effective at destroying kill streaks. Again, a primary weapon or swapping to the default LMG class is just as effective as the Pila, which is kind of sad. Next up at the number four spot, I have the Joker. It's a blast to use on small maps and you can clear objectives easily with it. And it most certainly can be useful and even deadly in the right situations. It's not super useful for killstreak destruction, although there is an argument for the bulky streaks like the gunship. But I mean, like things like the UAV is not worth using your time. More often than not, the UAV will exit the map before your rocket even hits it. And for Warzone players, the extra travel time for the rockets can actually be used to your advantage. Enemy squads and vehicles will panic when they see the missile incoming warning and they'll likely have no clue where the missile is coming from, how long it has to travel, and how long they have before your Joker rocket actually hits their vehicle. So they'll end up jumping out early and then you can use that to your advantage. The third best launcher in Modern Warfare 3 right now is going to the RGL-80. It was not an easy decision to put this at the number 3 or number 2 spot. Uh, comparatively, the RGL lacks some versatility, although that's not to say this weapon isn't versatile. It's the only launcher in this game that truly is spammable. It's great for doing things like getting rid of trophy systems or putting constant pressure on enemy players. Recently, the RGL got an aftermarket part, which I was hoping would be a little bit better than it actually is, but it does offer some new gameplay options. There's a two-shot slug explosive like shotgun ammo attachment, which is kind of weird. I don't really see the use case for it, but there also are drill charge rounds, which allows you to spam six explosives through walls and vehicles, which has incredible utility. There also are Semtex grenades, which are my personal favorite. Now, you can't one-shot with these Semtexes unless you stick an enemy, but they do open up close range gameplay, which isn't really an option for the normal RGL because a standard explosive round will need to travel six meters before it actually explodes. They also allow for like alternate zoning options and map control like you would with the crossbow. But I mean, overall, the, the RGL-80 is cool. It has a ton of use cases, but I think I like the RPG-7 better at the runner-up, the second best, uh, you know, number two spot here for the launchers. Again, it was a toss-up between putting the RPG at the number two and three slot, but I lean towards the RPG being better because this is the launcher to use as a weapon. It has the highest odds for one-shot kills, it moves quick, it handles quick, it swaps quick. The RPG and the RGL are really the only two launchers you can run around with and not feel like a turtle while using them, but I think the RPG is more effective at just blowing dudes up. 
<laughs> pause. Um, where, where the RGL feels more like a tool, where the RPG feels more like a weapon, and that's why I think it is better. The number one spot should be no surprise, but a quick reminder, if you haven't dropped a like on this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. At the number one spot, the best launcher in Modern Warfare 3 is the Storm Ender. Now, the Storm Ender can't get you kills, which you may expect a launcher to be able to do, but it is so, 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 so good at destroying everything else other than a player. This is the one launcher that can shoot cruise missiles out of the sky with ease. This is the one launcher that can destroy trophy systems with ease. It can shoot through walls. It can destroy all kinds of equipment, field upgrades, kill streaks. My test showed you it is the quickest and most effective kill streak destroyer. It just counters so much in this game. Now there are limitations, I actually did do a uh, video that dives more into what the Storm Ender can and can't destroy, it's not like it counters every single thing in the game. I'll have that video linked down below so you can check it out, but I'm just, I'm, I'm glad this weapon exists because if it didn't, I don't see any reason to use a launcher in this game to destroy you know, kill streaks and vehicles. I'd just be using primary weapons and the RGL and the RPG would be the only launchers worth using. So thank God the Storm Ender exists. That's just my opinion though. As always, you're welcome to leave your own worst to best list. Maybe you disagree with me on a few launchers, you know, if so, leave a comment. Again, please don't forget to tap that like button, get subscribed to the channel, especially if you made it all the way through this video. And uh, thanks for watching. My name is D, and I'll catch y'all on the next video.